Okay, important thing to realize <clears throat> is the units on K. Okay, the units are typically molarity to some N time to minus one. It's going to always going to be minus one on the time. It's very important because it helps you to inf inform you about the overall order of reaction. Sometimes you may be given an equation and you have the K and you, from the K you got to determine what order it is to know what equation to use which we'll talk about later. So it's important to realize there's some relationship between K units and the order. So let's look at for see if we can figure out a pattern. Zero order. When you're talking about zero order you're talking about rate which is molarities per time is equal to some k. There's no species on the other side. Okay, so if that's the case, then your units on k have to be the same. This has to be molarities per time. Okay. Okay, so therefore the units on k must be molarity per time. That way you get the units on rate. It has to be equivalent. Notice something about the units. If I take the units and add them up, molarity to the first power, right? and time to the minus one, one minus one is zero. We're talking about a zero order here. Let's get the first rate of, overall rate equation. Rate is molarities per time again. We got molarity in here since I got a first order, right? And I have K. Well, what unit does K have to be for me to end up with molarity per time? Well, since I already got molarity from the A, then all I have is time. Okay, so K units has to be time minus one. That way, end up with molarity per time. Now, what is the overall? Add up the units on my K. I get I got minus one there. Notice minus one. Notice first order. Second order. Right, molarity per time is what I'm looking for. I have molarity squared from that concentration of A. Well, what units does K have to be for this to be molarity per time? Well, I got to get rid of one of those molarities, right? So therefore, I got a molarity in the denominator, and I also have time in the denominator. Okay, that way one of the molarities cancel out, and I end up with molarities per time. Therefore, the units on K must be molarity minus 1, time minus 1. Minus 1, minus 1, minus 2. Second order. Third overall order. Right, molarity per time. Now I have molarity cubed. I want to end up with just molarity per time, so I need two of those molarities of that m cubed to go away. So therefore, I have molarity squared and time okay, in my units. So I, the units on k must be molarity minus 2 time minus 1. Minus 2, minus 1 is minus 3. Third order. What we're getting here is there's a pattern happening here. The pattern is the sum of your k units equals the negative overall order. The sum of the k units equals the negative overall order. Or another way of looking at it, negative of your sum of your k units equals the overall order. Okay. Let's look at an example and see how we can use this. There may be a problem, and all they got give you is the K. You need to figure out what the overall order is to be able to know which equation to use, which we're going to talk about later. So say K is five, molarity minus 5 seconds minus 1. What is the overall order? We know that minus the sum of your K units is equal to the overall order. Okay, so if I take that, I got minus 5 and minus 1. Okay, that's minus 6. And a negative of that gives me a positive. That's a 6 overall order. So just by looking at the units, minus 5, minus 1, 5 and 6, I know that's a 6 overall order. Okay, it's important. As I said later on, we'll be using it. Another way we may use it is going the opposite way. Just as a check, okay, when I'm trying to figure out my units on K, I want to make sure I have the right units, or also if I use the plot stuff that we're going to talk about later, I need to know what units on K from the plot. So let's look at this one, example two. Rate is equal to K, concentration of A to, to the first power, concentration of B to the second power. What are the units on K? Well, we know the following. We know 
that k units are m to the n time minus 1. We know that it's m to the n time minus 1. So in other words, the sum of your k units, n minus 1, equals your negative overall order. We know that fact already. We know the sum of your k units, in other words, n minus 1, n being the order with respect to them, not the order, excuse me, the power of the m, the molarity, minus 1, is equal to your negative overall order. So if I take that into this problem, n minus 1 is my orders, my um, powers of my molarity in time, that's equal to the negative overall order. Well, what's the overall order? Well, going back to my equation here, it's a to the first power and b to the second power, which is third, right? So it's equal to the negative three. So I add one to both sides, which would give me minus three plus one, which means n is equal to negative two. So my units on molarity, or molarity to the minus second, time to the minus one. So I can look at the units on K and I know what the overall order, or overall order I can get to the units on K. Something that comes useful sometimes in some of the work that we do. Homework, looking at units on K is homework number eight. As I said, it's important sometimes later on in some of the stuff that we'll be doing.